my name is Thomas and I will present to you a short uh, video about four things I think everybody should know about Jesus's resurrection. The first point is, are we talking about a real historic event? Well, there is no hard evidence as in archaeological findings, but we have to admit that that would be rather difficult for an event like the resurrection. Also to have faith is not like knowing things in science, which you can prove at hand of an experiment. In fact, the Bible itself says what faith is. It is to believe things which we cannot see and be sure about them. But even though I am a Christian and I do have faith in the Bible, I still want uh, to have some evidence that something is true. And with the resurrection, we do have historical evidence. There are two Roman historians, I think they have been mentioned on this video before, Flavius Josephus, he was uh, born a Jew in Jerusalem, AD 37, so probably 10 years after Jesus was crucified and resurrected. So it's very likely that he, he will have spoken to eyewitnesses. He penned his works down in AD 71 in Rome. So not much time has lapsed between the event and him writing about it. The other one is Tacitus, a uh, Roman historian, and he penned down his works in AD 116. The interesting thing is the accuracy with which Josephus, Tacitus, and the four authors of the gospel name the people who were in charge, the people who were concerned with the event and the time when it happened, because they are consistent and historically correct. Let's have a quick look. Um, we see that what they say, that Jesus or Christ was sentenced to death on the cross by Pilate, who was the Roman governor of Judea at the time. He did that at the will of the Jewish people. And Jesus was resurrected on the third day. Now, this, those two accounts are in harmony with what we read in the four Gospels. The second point I want to make is that Jesus' tomb was empty, and there were witnesses who have seen it empty. After Joseph of Arimathea um, puts Jesus' dead body into his own tomb, he rolled a big stone in front of the entrance. And also the Jewish leaders remember that Jesus has said that he would raise again on the third day. And they were worried that Jesus' disciples would steal away his dead body and pretend that he had risen. And with that worry, they go to Pilate. And Pilate gives them soldiers to guard the tomb and they make it secure with the guards and with a stone. On the third day, two women, Mary Magdalene and Mary, came to the tomb. Their intention was uh, to attend to the dead body in, according to the Jewish customs um, with oil and likewise. But what happens next is that an angel rolled the stone away and it wasn't exactly a quiet affair. An earthquake happened at the same time. The guards that were put next to the tomb witnessed that, that the angel has rolled away the stone and they were scared. And the angel invites the women to have a look at the empty tomb. We also have witnesses of the resurrected Jesus because Jesus' friends were doubtful about his resurrection. One in particular, Thomas. Thomas wasn't present when Jesus first appeared to them, and he said he would only believe if he would see proof. And that is the marks of the nails in Jesus' hands, with which he was nailed to the cross, and the mark in his side where he was pierced by the soldier. And just over a week later, Jesus appears to them again, 
and this time Thomas was present and he could put his fingers into the marks Jesus carried from his crucifixion. And Jesus makes this statement to him, look, you have seen and you believe, oh, blessed are those who don't see but believe. The Apostle Paul gives us a whole list of people who have witnessed the resurrected Jesus. He starts off that Christ died, that he was buried, and that he was raised. And then he appeared to Cephas, which is Peter, then to the twelve, then to more than 500 brothers and sisters, of which most were still alive when Paul penned this, and then James, all the apostles, and finally to Paul himself. Many of those were killed for the testimony about Jesus' resurrection. Let's go on to point number three. Which form did Jesus' body have when he ra was raised from the dead? Jesus appeared to his disciples after his resurrection, and they thought he must be a ghost. But Jesus did reassure them and said that he has risen with flesh and bones and the marks of his crucifixion. But they are still doubtful, and uh, to remove that doubt, Jesus eats in front of them. So Jesus has risen as a real person, not a spirit. Point number four I want to make is that Jesus' resurrection is a key part of the Christian faith. The Apostle Paul says to the Romans that the fact that God has raised Jesus from the dead is proof that Jesus is the one he said he was God's son. And I believe in a savior, Jesus, who did die for my sin, but now is very much alive. Again, the Apostle Paul speaks to the Philippians about the power of Christ's resurrection. And that really means that as a Christian, I have the faith, the sure hope that I likewise will be resurrected if I'm dead when Jesus comes back. But that's another topic. If you're interested, follow this channel to hear more about it. I'll just give a short summary about those four points I think everybody should know about Jesus's resurrection. First of all, that it was a real historic event. Secondly, that people have witnessed an empty tomb and have seen the resurrected Jesus. Thirdly, that Jesus rose from the dead with flesh and bones, not as a spirit, but as a real person. And fourthly, that Jesus' resurrection is a fundamental part of the Christian faith. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed my presentation. If so, please give me a like. If you'd like to leave a comment, please do so. Mm -hmm.